Hello, my name is Dr. Farman Ali and I'm a GP family physician. Today I will be talking about ear infections. There are two types of ear infections. One is called otitis externa or external ear infection and the other is called otitis media or middle ear infection. Otitis externa basically means that the infection is confined to the external part of the ear canal and it does not go beyond the ear drum. So how does this infection happen? Water gets into the ear and provides moisture for the bacteria to grow. This causes a further itching in the ear canal. People scratch or poke their ear which causes a damage to the skin and that becomes infected. This starts a vicious circle and the infection keeps growing. External ear infections are more common in swimmers because water gets into the ear canal on a regular basis. That is why sometimes it might be referred to it as swimmer's ear. Otitis externa is more common in hot, humid and sweaty weather because that is where the bacteria like to grow. Eczema and psoriasis can affect the ear canal and make the skin inflamed and flaky and put you at risk of external ear infections. Excessive ear wax. If you have excessive ear wax, the water gets trapped and the debris may also get trapped behind the wax. The bacteria are happy and they thrive in these conditions and cause infection. Ear syringing or use of cotton buds to clear the wax. If ear syringing is done by an inexperienced person, it may damage the ear canal or the lining of it. Remember, ear wax is a protective. So if it is a too little, by constantly clearing the ears with cotton buds, that may expose you to external ear infections. Middle ear infections, which I will talk about later, can also predispose to external ear infection. The reason for that is middle ear infection may produce a persistent discharge which can become stuck in the ear canal and thus cause otitis externa. So what are the symptoms of external ear infection? Common symptoms include itching of the ears, a discharge from the ear, occasionally temporary dull hearing, pain is associated, Ears may feel blocked or full. Otitis externa or external ear infection can happen in both ears at the same time. However, usually one ear is affected. Sometimes the glands of the neck or the ones around the ear can become enlarged and sore. So, there are three types of external ear infections. The first one is called acute otitis externa. This means that you have had the infection for less than three months, usually less than a week. Recurrent otitis externa, it means, this means that the condition keeps coming back. You may feel that the infection is getting better and then you develop the signs and symptoms again. The last, the third type is the chronic otitis externa, which means the condition has lasted or persisted for more than three months. Sometimes it can last for years. This is often because the underlying reason for the infection has not been dealt with or the infection is resistant to treatment. So what is the treatment for external ear infection? Most commonly we use ear drops. The National Institute of Clinical Excellence recommends flumethazone combined with clavicanol ear drops. These ear drops are used two to three drops twice a day for seven to ten days in the affected ear. Other type of ear drops that we commonly use are Sofridex which has got a steroid and an antibiotic and they are used two to three drops three to four times a day. Occasionally you may require ciprofloxacin ear drops which are used as 0.25 mils twice a day for seven days. 
So how to apply the eardrops? You lie on the affected ears facing upwards. You put several drops in the ear and remain lying there for one to two minutes. Then press the cartilage in front of the ear canal a few times to push the drops as much deeper as you can. Occasionally you might require or may be prescribed an automized ear spray. Automized ear spray, one dose delivers 60 mg of medication directly into the affected ear and it is used three times a day for seven to ten days. Other treatments that are combined with the eardrops, they may include painkillers, paracetamol or ibuprofen are most commonly used. In children, Calpol should be given according to the recommended doses. Occasionally, an earwick, which is a piece of gauze soaked in the treatment drops, is pushed gently into the ear canal and left there for two to three days. Remember, do not attempt to do this yourself. Seek advice from your clinician. Ear canal cleaning by gentle swabbing or suctioning or by careful syringing in experienced hand is also used at times to get rid of the infection. Sometimes you may require oral antibiotics. This is if the infection is particularly severe or the skin around the ear has become inflamed called cellulitis. Then you may be given an antibiotics. The most common antibiotic used is flucloxacillin and in penicillin allergic people erythromycin is used. So how to prevent recurrent infections? First thing, let the ear discharge escape. Try not to leave any cotton balls in your ear. Do not clean the ear canal with cotton buds. As I mentioned earlier, you may cause damage to the ear canal or irritate the inflamed skin. Also, there is a chance that the wax may be pushed further into the ears. Keep your ears dry. Swimmers sometimes use silicone rubber ear plugs, which you can use in the shower as well, if you are particularly prone to recurrent ear infections. Some people use a piece of cotton wool soaked in like white paraffin or Vaseline in the outer ear canal. You can use prevention drops. Swimmers use acetic acid drops. If you have excess wax in your ears, use wax dissolving drops, which you can get over the counter from your pharmacist or olive oil to dissolve the wax. Occasionally, if your current infection is not getting treated, you may require a swab being taken by the practice nurse and sent off to the laboratory to identify the organism, which may require specific treatment or antibiotic. If recurrent infections are not getting treated in primary care, they may be referred to the ear, nose and throat specialist. This is not routinely done. You may require an urgent admission to the hospital if the clinician suspects malignant otitis externa. The symptoms of that are pain and headache are more severe than the clinical signs would suggest. There is granulation tissue at the bone cartilage junction of the ear canal or they find an exposed bone in your ear canal when they look into it. If there is any paralysis of the facial nerve which will be shown by drooping of the face on the side of the lesion or extensive cellulitis. Considerable discharge or extensive swelling of the ear canal and when microsuctioning or earwick insertion is required, you may be referred to the ear, nose and throat specialist. Keep your ears dry and do not use excessive clearing with cotton buds. Otitis media. So what is otitis media? As I said, the ear canal is divided into two parts. The outer ear, the external ear canal, which is the part before the eardrum. 
The middle ear is the part of the ear that exists beyond the eardrum or behind it. You may hear the term acute otitis media, which refers to the infection of the middle ear. It's more common in children than adults. So how does this infection occur? The space behind the eardrum, or the middle ear as we call it, is normally filled with air. It is connected to the back of your throat by a tiny channel called eustachian tube. It contains three hearing bones. The middle ear space is filled with air, but occasionally it may become filled with a fluid. It typically occurs when you have a cold. The mucus then becomes infected by germs. It could be either viral or bacterial. And this leads to acute otitis media. Children with glue ear have mucus permanently trapped behind the eardrum. And this makes them prone to recurrent middle ear infections. So what are the symptoms of middle ear infection? Ear pain, earache is more most common but does not always occur it is caused by having a tense and inflamed eardrum dull or muffled hearing may be present for a few days and it can last after the infection has cleared high temperature fever is common children may feel sick or be sick actually and start vomiting and feel generally unwell Young babies may become hot and irritable. Remember, a hot crying baby should be checked for middle ear infections. Sometimes eardrums burst perforates and this lets the infected fluid, the mucus, out and often relieves the pain. This ear pain will suddenly become better but the ear is now runny, sometimes for a few days. Most of these perforations will heal by themselves. The perforated eardrum usually takes approximately a few weeks after the infection to heal completely. So what are the investigations for the middle ear infection? Usually it does not require any investigations except that your clinician will look into the ear canal which is called otoscopy. Most ear infections get better without any treatment. Commonly, the doctor may advise a wait and see approach for three days. This is because many of these infections are caused by viruses and do not require any treatment or antibiotics. Recovery usually takes place between three days and a week. During that time, you can use paracetamol or ibuprofen for adults and Calpol should be used according to the recommended dosage for children. Drink loads of fluids. Keep well hydrated. Most of the ear infections don't need antibiotics. Now, many parents would ask whether the child needs antibiotics. Remember, antibiotics are not without their side effects. They include diarrhea, rash, and they may get rid of the friendly bacteria in the gut. Antibiotics are unlikely to help in otitis media or middle ear infection if the child is two or more than two years of age. If the temperature is less than 39 degrees Celsius, if the child is not severely distressed, or if your child has been unwell for less than three days. Antibiotics may be prescribed in certain situations by your GP or the practice nurse. This is the case when the child is under two years of age and the infection in both ears. If the child or the young adult has a discharge coming from the ear. If the infection is severe. If the infection is not settling within three days. Or if any complications develop. Or if the child has another medical underlying condition which may increase the risk of infection such as diabetes, immunocompromised, or if their spleen has been removed, they may require antibiotics and the clinician may prescribe those. So what are the complications? It is common 
for the fluid to remain behind the eardrums even after the infection has cleared up. This may cause a dull or muffled hearing as I said. This usually clears within a week and does not require any further treatment. Sometimes the mucus does not clear properly and a glue ear may develop, especially in children. Hair may remain muffled or dull. Repeated ear infections can occur, for example, due to having several cords in a row. It can lead to a glue ear. You should consult your doctor if the dull hearing persisted after the infection has gone and more than a week has passed or if your child has having hearing difficulty. Rarely a serious infection of the bones behind the ear may develop. This is called mastoiditis, which is the mastoid bone behind the ear. This is a porous bone and the infection once it sets in, it's difficult to treat. If there is any tenderness behind the ear, please consult your doctor and your doctor may refer the child for further treatment. So, in summary, consult your doctor if the child with earache suddenly becomes unwell or significantly more ill, has an illness which seems severe to you, does not improve over three days, or has a temperature more than 39 degrees Celsius. Blue ear. Most children will have at least a couple of ear infections before they reach the age of five. These are caused by viral infections and does not require antibiotics. If the infections are very frequent, a specialist may advise the insertion of a grommet into the eardrum. This is the same treatment that we use for glue ears in general. A grommet is like a tiny drainage pipe that helps the fluid to escape from the middle ear and lets the air in. Some research suggests that this may reduce the number of recurrent ear infections. Thank you very much. Thank you.